Good morning to you all. Welcome to Charter of the Week Assembly. As I speak today, it's really icy and cold outside and uh, today is the first Sunday in Advent. So I guess uh, the weather is, is uh, what we'd expect. I wonder what you can, whether you can think of what I was talking about last week when I spoke about Advent. And uh, Reverend uh, Andrew came in on Friday and spoke to some of you on the same theme. What was it we talked about, uh, the meaning of Advent? I wonder if you can remember. Well, before we go any further with that idea of Advent, we're going to say our liturgy. In the beginning, when God created all things, he said, let there be light, and there was light. Let your light shine. God is light, and in him there is no darkness. Let your light shine. I am the light of the world. Let your light shine. So I wonder if any of you thought of that, uh, that phrase about waiting. Advent is about waiting. But today we're going to think another, uh, about another idea to do with Advent, and that is pre preparation. Something we do while we wait. We prepare. And uh, one of the big focuses of today's assembly is about a parable that uh, Jesus taught, and I've put a picture up there. I wonder if you know what the parable is. It's all about preparation. Well, we are preparing, aren't we, for Christmas? And we make lists. Don't forget lists. Don't forget to order the turkey. Don't forget to buy the Christmas tree and uh, the presents that you're going to put under it. Last year, uh, we left our tree so late, we nearly ran out and didn't have time to get one. So Advent is about waiting and preparing. What does preparation mean? Well, I bet you've seen your mums or dads or gran grannies and granddads uh, preparing a meal and maybe you've helped. We have to get the ingredients ready. Now, when I prepare a meal, I tend to just go to the cupboards as I go along and, uh, and make my meal. But my husband, when he prepares a meal, he does what's called mise en place. So he has all his ingredients in little bowls, all set out on the, uh, the kitchen side, ready to be used. It's very organised, very prepared. This picture is of a backpack. And uh, I used to try to get my boys to prepare, uh, to pack their backpacks the night before they went to school. I'm afraid it didn't always work. They were always scrambling around in the morning, but uh, preparing, preparing for the day ahead, packing your backpack, making your sandwiches. It's all about preparation. And we prepare when we go on a trip, we look at the map and uh, we see where we're going, we need to buy the petrol to make sure uh, that we have got enough to get there. It's all about preparation. And today, as we, uh, as we think about uh, being back at school for another week, Mr Lawrence said that he would be out early just to check to see whether we needed to prepare the playground or prepare the paths in by gritting them with salt so that uh, you don't slip and so that it might be possible to go out to play. And I bet you've seen some uh, gritters maybe out on the roads. Now, we haven't had snow as I'm speaking, but uh, it might come later. But uh, some places in England overnight have had lots of snow and the gritters are out. It's all about preparation. Well, I wonder if you thought about that uh, parable that Jesus had taught. It's called the parable of the 10 bridesmaids. 
And I'm going to tell you a story about that now, using these pictures that I think are quite fun. So uh, I'm going to get my notes and I'll tell you the story. Well, these 10 bridesmaids were part of a bridal party. And uh, Jesus taught this parable to think about preparation. So the parable is something like this. There was a wedding ceremony and there were 10 bridesmaids waiting for the groom to arrive to marry his bride. And in ancient Jewish tradition, the bride had to wait at her house and the groom would come round to collect her and take her to his family home. So the wedding would also traditionally take place in the evening or even during the, during the night. So the 10 bridesmaids had oil lamps and they needed to wait for the groom to arrive. Here they all are with their oil lamps. Now their oil lamps were used to keep <clears throat> a light waiting so that they could see when the bride, bridegroom arrived. But on this occasion, the, the uh, groom was a little bit late. And you could see that they all fell asleep. Well, he arrived and they were really shocked because they, they weren't prepared. They weren't, they weren't really ready for him. Some of the bridesmaids, five of them, realized that their lamps had gone out and they didn't have any more oil because they hadn't prepared. They hadn't gone out to buy some. Some of the others, well, yes, their lights had gone out as well but they had prepared, they had thought in advance and they had brought extra oil. So they were able to fill their lamps. So the five bridesmaids, well, they couldn't get to the wedding procession because they didn't have any, any light to see. They had to go and find a, a 24 hour oil seller. But by the time that they got their oil, it was too late. The other five bridesmaids, well, they were all sorted and ready to go. I wonder whether you would have been prepared or not. Are you the sort of person that thinks ahead? Jesus called those people wise. Whereas the other ones he called foolish. So what did the wise bridesmaids do then to be called wise by Jesus in that parable? And what did the foolish bridesmaids do to be called foolish? Maybe stop at the moment and uh, have a little think about those and share together. I wonder what sort of ideas uh, you came up with. And I wonder what, uh, what is important about preparing for us. Schools are places of preparation. Our preschool prepares the children in rainbows so that when they join in reception, they're ready. And uh, in year six, children are prepared so that they are ready to go to secondary school. And secondary school prepares us for whatever's gonna happen next. That's when we start finding what we're really interested in and what we really want to do with our lives. In the story, the bridesmaids were prepared with their oil. And you could say that all of us are waiting for whatever is gonna happen next, whether it's Christmas or whether it's school or our jobs or our homes. So the question is, how well do we prepare? Do we put in the effort now, knowing that we'll benefit later? What are you waiting for? Christmas, something else, another festival, or an important event? Do you need to prepare for it? Have a think about what you might need to do 
this point before it happens. Let's bow our heads and I'm going to say a prayer together. And uh, if you want to join in, then you say Amen at the end. Dear God, we're thankful for the events celebrated in our communities. And we're reminded that preparation is something that we can do to make our lives a little easier and to help us make the most of those events that we uh, prepare for that are ahead of us. May we be wise in our decisions and help us to make the most of the opportunities we have now at school, knowing that they are preparing us for the future. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer, remembering that God is with us in all the journeys of our lives, alongside us, helping us as we prepare for different eventualities. Um, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You might want to thank Mr. Lawrence and uh, thank your midday supervisors during uh, this next week when it's going to be very cold. Mr. Lawrence goes out and he grits and prepares the playground so you can play. And your midday supervisors and uh, LSAs, they're out on the playground, even though it's really cold, so that you can go out and be safe and play there. So maybe say thank you. Don't take them for granted because they're preparing in their heads for what you need and then acting on it. Well, today we're going to now look at our child of the week, those people who have been showing our school values in their lives. And in year one, Miss Berman has chosen Alfie and Miss Marston has chosen Ian. In year two, Miss Franklin has chosen Stanley and Arby is the child of the week for Miss Jakes and Mrs Walker. Moving into year three, big well done to Rudy, who is child of the week for Mrs Epps and Miss Poole, and Johnny for Miss Cross. There are two children of the week in Mr Fev's class in year four. They are Luna and Harvey, and Charlie is the child of the week chosen by Mr Wright. In year five, Mrs Adonu has chosen Indy, and Thomas is the child of the week for Mr Boyer. And finally, in year six, a big well done to Charlie, who is the child of the week for Miss Greenhill, and Lily, who is child of the week for Mr Nile. Well done to all of you, and I hope to see you later on uh, during Monday or into Tuesday, uh, if I don't make it round everybody and I'll come and hand you your certificates. So just thinking ahead, how can you be prepared this week? Prepared helping at home to get your bags ready, your sandwiches ready? Prepared at school for your lessons? Prepared and ready to learn, ready to listen? Prepared to say thank you? When somebody does something nice. Prepared to be grateful. Let's think a little bit about how we can be prepared in advance so that we do the right thing. Have a great week and I'll see you around school. So we say together, Go in the light and the peace of Jesus, in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>